Imagine a man so dangerous he is sentenced to 450 years in prison, in addition to a death sentence. A man who committed a horrific killing spree just a month after being released from prison, despite having a decades-long history of violent crime and mental health issues. A serial killer who has been labelled the most dangerous inmate in the world. This is the tale of Nico Jenkins, early life. From the very beginning, Nico Jenkins' life was marked by turmoil and dysfunction. Born in 1986 in Colorado to parents Lori Jenkins and David A. Meiji, Nico's childhood was anything but stable or normal. Even at a young, impressionable age, he exhibited deeply disturbing behavior that foreshadowed the horrific crimes he would one day commit. The first major warning sign came when Nico was just seven years old. In a shocking incident, the young boy showed up at his elementary school, Omaha's Highland Elementary, with a loaded .25 caliber handgun. This was just a glimpse into the darkness that was already beginning to take hold of Nico's psyche. From there, Nico's downward spiral only accelerated. He was quickly shuttled in and out of group homes, juvenile detention centers, and eventually, the state prison system. His crimes ranged from petty theft to violent physical assaults, including brutal attacks on other children using weapons like clothes hangers. At just 12 years old, Nico's violent tendencies had escalated to the point that he was sent to a youth rehabilitation center after assaulting someone with a knife. By the time he reached his teenage years, Nico had already amassed an extensive criminal record. In his late teens, he committed two separate carjackings at gunpoint finally leading to a lengthy 18-year prison sentence in 2003. You would think such a lengthy stint behind bars might have been enough to curb Nico's violent impulses, but tragically, that was not the case. Even while incarcerated, Nico continued to wreak havoc, demonstrating that he was a menace both inside and outside of prison walls. He was charged twice more, once for assaulting a guard during a funeral furlough, and again for his involvement in a prison riot. Nico was also frequently disciplined for a host of other infractions, including gang activity, weapon making, and attacking other inmates. It became increasingly clear that Nico Jenkins was a powder keg waiting to explode, a truly dangerous individual who seemed beyond rehabilitation. Nico's early life and criminal history paint a bleak picture, a troubled young man whose mental health issues were tragically neglected, allowing his violent tendencies to spiral out of control. The 2013 Murders After serving 10 and a half years of his 18-year sentence, Nico Jenkins was finally released from prison in July of 2013. Just a month after being released from prison, he unleashed a wave of violence that left four innocent people dead. It all began on August 11th, when a patrol officer made a gruesome discovery in Spring Lake Park. In a white Ford pickup truck, the bodies of 26-year-old Juan Uribe Pena and 29-year-old Jorge C. Cajiga Ruiz were found. Both men had been shot execution style, with their pockets turned inside out. Investigators believe the pair had been lured there to meet some women, only to be brutally murdered. This double homicide marked the start of Nico's murderous rampage, which came less than two weeks after his release from prison on July 30th but his killing spree was far from over. On August 19th, the body of 22-year-old Curtis Bradford was discovered outside a detached garage. He had been shot twice in the back. Interestingly, it was later revealed that Bradford and Nico had actually posed for a Facebook photo together the day before his death, suggesting the two may have been acquainted. Nico's fourth and final victim was 33-year-old Andrea Kruger. In the early hours of August 21st, her body was found lying in the middle of the road, riddled with multiple 12-gauge shotgun wounds to her face, neck, and shoulder. Kruger had been returning home from her bartending job when she was ambushed and killed. In the days that followed, investigators worked tirelessly to gather evidence implicating Nico Jenkins. Surveillance footage showed a female accomplice purchasing the distinctive deer slug ammunition used in the murders. Additional footage tracked the path of Kruger's stolen SUV before it was abandoned. Finally, on August 30th, Nico Jenkins was arrested on an unrelated terroristic threats charge. During an eight-hour interrogation on September 3rd, 
he made a chilling confession, admitting to all four killings and claiming he had carried them out at the command of the ancient Egyptian serpent god, Apophis. Nico's bizarre delusions about Apophis would become a central theme throughout his trial and sentencing proceedings. But despite his attempts to plead insanity, a psychiatrist ultimately concluded that he was simply faking his symptoms and actually suffered from antisocial personality disorder. Nonetheless, the evidence against Nico was overwhelming. In April 2014, he was found guilty on all four counts of murder. The sentencing, however, was delayed multiple times as the court struggled to determine if he was competent enough to face the death penalty. It wasn't until May 2017 that a three-judge panel finally sentenced Nico Jenkins to death for the killings, as well as an additional 450 years on weapons charges. He has since made several unsuccessful attempts to appeal his conviction, with the US Supreme Court refusing to hear his case in 2020. His allure. Despite the brutal nature of his crimes, Nico seemed to have a strange allure that drew in a number of female admirers. In the days following his arrest, it was reported that Nico had multiple women, each claiming to be his wife. These female companions, some of whom had even visited him in prison, appeared to be enamored by the notorious criminal. Authorities believe these women may have even played a role in Nico's murderous rampage, with surveillance footage showing one of them purchasing the distinctive ammunition used in the killings. The notion of these women being drawn to such a violent, unrepentant offender is disturbing to say the least. Nico Jenkins displayed a complete disregard for human life, yet somehow managed to amass a small following of female devotees. Criminologists have long studied the phenomenon of hybristophilia, the interest in and attraction to those who have committed atrocious acts. In Nico's case, it seems his reputation as a ruthless killer combined with his delusional ramblings about ancient Egyptian gods, created an allure for certain individuals. They were captivated by the darkness that consumed him, seemingly oblivious or indifferent to the immense suffering he had caused. A tragic failure of the system. Regardless of everything, Nico Jenkins' story is one of immense tragedy, both for his victims and for Jenkins himself. This case highlights the critical importance of addressing mental health issues within the criminal justice system. From a very young age, Jenkins exhibited clear signs of severe mental illness. He reported hearing voices and having delusions about Egyptian gods. Yet time and time again, the system failed to properly diagnose and treat him. Instead, he was simply shuffled through the justice system with his violent outbursts met with more incarceration rather than the psychiatric care he so desperately needed. Experts who evaluated Jenkins believed he was faking his symptoms, chalking up his bizarre behavior to simple antisocial personality disorder. But in hindsight, it seems clear that Jenkins was truly suffering from debilitating psychosis. If only the proper interventions had been made early on, perhaps these tragic murders could have been prevented. The saddest part is that Nico Jenkins is not an isolated case. Far too often we see individuals with serious mental health issues ending up in our prisons and jails where their conditions only worsen. It's a systemic problem that demands urgent attention and reform. This case serves as a stark reminder that we are all responsible for looking out for the most vulnerable among us. If we had paid closer attention to the warning signs in Nico's life, maybe those four innocent lives could have been spared. Nico Jenkins' story is one that will undoubtedly haunt us for a long time. He has been called the most dangerous inmate in the world, a title he certainly earned through his horrific crimes and complete disregard for human life. But beneath the violence and depravity, there's a tragic tale of a young man who was failed by the very system meant to help him. If you found this exploration of his life and crimes informative and entertaining, be sure to leave a comment below and let us know your thoughts. And if you want to stay up to date on more stories like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications whenever we post new content.